It's another beautiful day at the duplex. About to do some painting of some board and batten. I got my sidekick right here. I'm gonna shut the door and you'll probably hear everything I'm saying because there's a nice hole right there, but enjoy your show. Thanks, bye. So there's a lot been going on at the property and uh, you guys know that I've been pretty busy with it, but I wanted to make this video sort of to cover, you know, not only what's going on with the real estate market, uh, things with this property, but actually go into a little bit of my stock portfolio. You know, I received a lot of questions about how my dividend investment portfolio has been doing. I want to wrap it all up into one video because it's been, you know, such a long time since I've done that. I'll do some timestamps in the description of this video. You guys can feel free to jump around, go whatever the section interests you. And uh, if you ever have any questions whatsoever uh, along the way, you know, be sure to leave a comment in the comment section. I'll be sure to get back to you. And not only that, all these questions were asked by people on Instagram. I'd highly recommend if you guys haven't gone ahead and followed my Instagram account, it's at VLITZTV on Instagram. And uh, I'm just gonna be going through a number of those comments right now. So let's jump right in. All right, so I was actually blown away by the amount of people who were asking me questions about uh, real estate within the uh, poll that I threw up there on Instagram. So uh, I'm gonna start by covering some of the real estate questions that I was getting. First foremost question that I was getting was, with supply and demand and the interest rates where they're at, where do I see the real estate market heading? And let's be honest, the real estate market is here to stay. Historically, you know, we're looking at some really solid returns from uh, real estate. And overall, it's been my goal to get into real estate, start with investing, uh, you know, in the stock market and be able to transition my portfolios just a little bit into real estate for that diversification. Now, that's pretty much what I've been doing and uh, looking overall at supply and demand. Well, right now there is such a shortage of supply and material costs are so high that I don't see the demand being filled anytime soon. It's absolutely crazy where I'm at. So because of COVID, a lot of people were moving out of the cities. They didn't want to be in groups with other people and they started coming to more rural areas. So rent in this general location and housing prices skyrocketed. Now, the reason why I was able to get into real estate at the time that I did was mainly because of how much work and effort needed to go into fixing this property, all the renovation work that we needed. And you've kind of seen it along the way if you guys have been following this channel. If you guys didn't know this is a split level duplex right now one bedroom apartments where i'm at uh are around fourteen hundred dollars so if i just slapped a fresh coat of paint downstairs and just rented that out as is which theoretically i could do uh, i'd be looking at around fourteen hundred dollars a month now this unit alone upstairs is a three bedroom unit it's going to be fully renovated with washer dryer a bunch of amenities some really good off street parking in the back we're close to a downtown area it's really a solid location uh, around 22 to $2,400 a month. How I made this property work was looking, you know, taking a close look at the numbers and understanding, hey, this is what we can rent it out for. And even if rents start to dip, housing, let's say, gets under control and it starts to go down a little bit. The reason why this property works for me is because of the interest rate that I received on it. Now, I got 2.75%, which if you look back, it was pretty much the low of the low for interest rates when this came out. So, uh, you know, I didn't time it. I was working with a really good uh, lender who kind of said, hey, you should lock in this rate as soon as you can. And actually at the time, I think I paid like a couple hundred dollar penalty because I locked it early before the deal had closed. But in the long run, I mean, it saves you, you know, tens of thousands of dollars when it comes to uh, buying and owning real estate. So in the near term, do I see this changing? Not really. I think it's going to get worse before it gets better in terms of supply and demand. And then eventually what I really think is going to happen and call me crazy here, but uh, there's a company called Boxable who I'm really interested in and they do sort of like manufactured um, 
houses that you can really start with, uh, you know, a base unit, which is just a square. You can get, you know, a bathroom, a kitchen, a living room, all in that. And it's offloaded from a truck in a day they set it up. And with units like this, with this particular company, and I'm not saying that they're gonna necessarily blow up or go anywhere, but this is where I think housing is headed. I think, uh, you know, with this stuff, it's so cool because you can just add on to it and take away from it whenever you want. So let's say you wanted a separate kitchen, you could build a whole new level or attach a part of a house to this and build that kitchen or build more bedrooms or just continue adding and sort of building up in that way. Now, I think housing eventually will go to more of an affordable route in that way because I don't see us being able to sustain the levels that we're at. And really what we're seeing is a lot of younger sort of people who are even not even looking for investments, right? Not even looking to invest. They just want a nice property to live in it's almost unattainable, especially with all the debt that they're accruing from student loans in different areas. So yeah, I think in the long term we're gonna get it under control, but for now, I, I really don't see a solution. All right, now I got another question that asked my plans to buy another rental property. And yes, I still plan on doing that in the future, but the issue is because of how much money I've had to put into this one and all the time that I put into it, it's made it a little bit hard to save up for that next one. So initially my plan was to live in this property for about a year and be able to buy another property right after that. Now, I think it's gonna take me a little bit longer to be able to get a decent enough down payment and I wanna be a lot more careful when it comes to selecting my next property. So I think we're at least a few years away from that, uh, probably around two years is my guess. And next, I might look for more of a, uh, I, I really wanna get lake property. I might even do something where I buy just land. And with that land, I'm able to build, let's say a tiny home, rent it out on Airbnb. And you know, once that starts cash flowing that Airbnb, my plan is to roll that into building a more permanent structure on that land and have it be a little bit better of, a, of an investment in that realm. Now, I also wanna go into uh, more multifamilies eventually. I think that there's still opportunities if you, you know, make the right connections, people are selling out and you have some good deals, then it's really a great route to go. Now, what I'm most excited for when I move out of this unit, you know, we're going to be cash. We're going to be doing super well with cash flow, especially seeing as we've done everything like we fixed foundational issues. We've done stuff to the roof. We've fixed the hot water heaters, like swapped them out. Uh, the next big thing on the list, I guess, would be HVAC if that becomes an issue in the future. But really head to toe, like all these massive costs that most people will incur, we've sort of taken care of. I think when I bought this property too, I mean, the roof was only two years old, so I think I have a, a decent amount of time there, but we've re-insulated certain areas. We've just done so much to it that when I move out, you know, I'm still gonna be anticipating big costs coming on. I'm still gonna be budgeting for it, but I don't necessarily see that happening. I mean, looking around at this place too, like we're putting in this flooring, the flooring's new. We're putting uh, new countertops. We got new appliances back here and they don't really make appliances like they used to, but they're new, right? And so they should have a decent lifespan to them. And I know renters are gonna be pretty harsh on them, but I'm gonna be really selective with who I'm renting it out. And that's actually another really cool thing is with that downstairs unit that we are turning into a two bedroom right now, it's a one bedroom unit. We're gonna turn it into a two bedroom. We're actually gonna rent it out to a couple of our friends that we already have lined up. So we already know that we're gonna be getting a little bit of cash influx in the future. And again, gonna help with that next down payment, saving up and being able to move on. So I will talk more specifically about the numbers once the unit's rented out and everything's all good. And you know, I've sort of recouped a little bit, recovered from all these big expenses I've been incurring. And uh, I'm happy to dive more into details on that. All right, now the next question is a really good one. And uh, you know, I'm sitting on the toilet here for a uh, good reason. It was actually because I just installed this over the past weekend, something that I learned to do. Um, and I've taught myself so much from this renovation that I really think, you know, at the end of the day, once it's all fixed, once it's rented out and we're cash flowing and we're looking good, things are green, you know, uh, it definitely was worth it. During the moment with everything that I've been dealing with, how much money I've had to spend on it and, uh, you know, how much time I've sank into it. And I really missed a huge opportunity on YouTube where I was growing this channel, getting a decent amount of revenue from it and sort of had to take a break from that so I could focus on you know, covering my ass with this property and make it, uh, you know, livable. Uh, it, it, it wasn't worth it in that sense. And 
if I were to say, go back and be able to buy this property again, like let's say I was making offers, I would definitely pass on this property. And with hindsight now, like I know exactly what to look for for those next properties. I know the exact questions I need to ask. And I think realistically, it was good for me to have a property that was challenging at the beginning. Now, when I look at things, I know exactly how much it's gonna to cost to fix them or rough estimates of these things, or I know the contacts that I need uh, in order to fix some of the issues that might be happening. But realistically, like with the structural issues and sagging floors and things like that, I know to steer clear from those. I don't really wanna deal with that again, and I don't think I'll need to. I think, uh, you know, getting into this property at the beginning, again, was, you know, a, a blessing in the lessons that I was able to learn, sort of the experience of renovating and being able to make it my own in a way where I'm not, you know, I don't have a massive budget to do all these crazy things. But when I actually live in this unit, it's going to be nicer than where I'm living now. It's going to be more spacious. Things are going to be new. Uh, you know, I'm really excited for that. Uh, but again, I wish I bought a different property and I wish I didn't have to put as much work and time and money into it. But it's just how things worked out and I don't tend to dwell on the past so I just keep pushing forward, moving forward and I do what I gotta do to make it work. So next is the pros and cons of this building. There are a lot of cons when it came to it. You know, when I was renovating it, all the cockroaches that were here, the amount of work that needed to go into it, like completely redoing this kitchen, the cabinets, everything. And really it was at a point where it wasn't salvageable. I wish that I could have cut corners, saved some money and reused materials, but they were so disgusting and left in disrepair. And you know, I really didn't have an option. So the cons is really how much it took to get to the point that we're at and to the point that we're gonna be living in here. Now, the pros of this building, there are a lot of pros as well. The location of this is extremely nice. Now, a pro and con is that I have a shared driveway. With that shared driveway, it's in pretty rough condition, so I'm gonna have to uh, repave it and, and you know bring it back to life. And luckily, I have a really great neighbor who is going to be splitting the cost of say, that stuff with me. Now, I have a little yard in the backyard as well. It's not too massive, but you know it is something. There's not a lot of yard space around me for neighboring houses and stuff like that, so it's cool to have that. And that's all uh, on my property, technically. That's not shared, so it's cool. We're gonna be putting a fence up around that and making that a nice, a nice area too. But realistically, great spot for commuting. We're close enough to Boston that, you know, people can commute into Boston. We're close enough to really, you know, the work, the work front areas around here that if you are working in, uh, you know, a couple towns over, we're right next to the highway to get there. A lot of people working in downtown and actually um, a couple towns over is a college. I actually went there, it was University of New Hampshire uh, at UNH. A lot of the students actually come for housing as well. So in this town, I don't necessarily think that I'm going to be renting to college students. We'll see what happens in the future. But, you know, I know uh, I'm going to be selective with them and uh, make sure that I'm doing everything by the book, making sure I'm making the right calls. But that's really the huge perks is the location of it. Um, and it doesn't really get much better than where we're at. Okay, real quick, I know a lot of people come to this channel specifically for investments, talking about the stock market, and even looking at my portfolio, some of the investments that I have been making. And so I've been saying it for a while now, guys. I have paused my investments. I haven't really been focused too much on the market, but I know that there were a lot of questions asking, you know, how are your portfolios been doing? Have you actually sold out of some of the portfolios in order to cover uh, some of the duplex renovation projects that you've been working on? And I'm gonna answer all this. I'll, I'll jump into every portfolio that I have right now on my phone and uh, start the screen recording here. So you right now, now should be seeing the uh, iPhone application up right here. I'm going to open up uh, Robinhood to start out with. So let's take a quick look at Robinhood. You can see this is the overall portfolio right now. At one point, I think I was hovering around $30,000, maybe $31,000, and it's all the way down to $25,450 right now. Again, not worried about this at all. You can see my buying power is actually sitting at $300. So I've been steadily receiving these dividends, and I just have been so busy that I completely forgot about reinvesting them uh, into the stock market up until now. But this is is a good thing because now I'm able to use this money at a time where the stock prices are a little bit lower than they have been historically. So theoretically, dollar cost averaging, we're going to get up to higher levels and this money is going to be working for me just a little bit harder than it would have if I was investing uh, at a little bit higher levels. So looking at the past day, we're down 2%. I think it's going to be like this for a little bit. Uh, down 2% for the past week, down 3% for the month, 
a little more than 3% for the past three months. And over the past year, we're still up 2.5%. Now, again, this is my dividend portfolio. And those dividends that are uh, just sitting in this portfolio and stuff aren't really tracked super well in Robinhood. So this portfolio is probably up just a little bit more than what it's actually representing here. However, again, this is a portfolio that I'm holding for the long term. And I don't know if I'm going to sell a, a little bit of this in order to recoup some of the stuff going on with real estate because I've actually been focused on selling out and uh, leveraging money from my other portfolios in just a little bit of a different way. So let me open up another application here for you guys. Let's check out Acorns. You guys know that Acorns was one that I was investing with. I had probably around $10,000 at the peak down to $4.87. So yes, I took out the money from this. Well, why did I do that? And that's, you know, a pretty solid question. Uh, actually, this 487 that's left in here is probably just one of the referrals from somebody signing up for uh, Acorns using my code. But uh, beside the fact, why did I sell out of Acorns? Well, Acorns is a little bit different. I think it's uh, for more beginning investors who are just dabbling with investments. It's a cool way to save extra money, but I like having more control over my specific investments. And actually this money really helped me uh, with a lot of those duplex renovations that I've been working on. So you guys know that uh, I have been spending a lot of money. I budgeted initially, I wanted to uh, renovate the whole place for around $30,000. And boy, oh boy, was that a pipe dream. I've doubled that uh, sort of initial budget. And I probably spent uh, somewhere between 60 and $80,000 to try and build this uh, real estate back up to where it needs to be in order for me to live there and start cash flowing and uh, you know make it a true investment property. And so a lot of people might look at that and be a little bit upset with uh, me selling out. I sold when the market was a little bit higher and uh, I try to be as transparent as possible with that stuff. Now I've been trying to dig myself out of this little financial hole that I've created from investing in this real estate property and uh, having these portfolios and being able to sell out a little bit of them has really helped me do that. So with this one, again, cycled it back into real estate and you guys may be wondering, well, that kind of sucks because now you don't have access to that funds. It's tied up with your projects, but here's my plan. I'm going to be doing what's known as a cash out refinance. After I've completely renovated this property, I'm going to rent it out. After it's rented out, you know, I'm going to be able to look at the values. We're going to be able to compare it to other houses around the area. And uh, the real estate market has really continued skyrocketing since I bought this place. And so when I reappraise this, it's going to be appraised at a lot higher. And then what I do is a cash out refinance, get a lot of that money that uh, I had put into this property, get it right back. I can either invest in the stock market. I can use it as another down payment for a potential another property. And uh, I'll talk more about that process as I get closer to it. But that's where this money went. Now, it wasn't only this portfolio that I did it with, with as well. Let me go ahead and open my Webull investing portfolio. And at one point, I think this was around ten to $12,000. It's down to $1,400. And uh, again, that's just to make sure I have enough cash on hand to cover some of the expenses from uh, the real estate property stuff that's been going on. So a lot of this is actually still just in my portfolio. I'm waiting for a lot of these bigger expenses to finalize, uh, but I just wanted to make sure that uh, I had them. And you know, if the market tanked a ton, I was going to be a little bit stressed about selling out of the stock market then. So I've sold these probably a little while back. I probably posted on my Instagram story about it and stuff, but uh, this is sort of where I'm at with these portfolios right now. Let's take a quick look at uh, M1 Finance, where my Roth IRA is housed. I believe I have around $6,000 in here right now, $5,800 in here. And then something that I don't typically showcase on this channel, I actually don't have it on my phone but uh, it would be my uh, 401k, which uh, I've continued to invest in my 401k. I'm probably sitting somewhere around 20,000 in there as well right now. So the investments, you know, I've been sort of trickling, uh, but really I pause them as I've been working to get myself out of this little financial hole with real estate. So I'm really excited to be able to invest again. And that's going to happen at the end of this month when I finally move into the property. I'm going to be putting out a ton of videos, talk about my new revised investment strategy, because as I've been sitting on the sideline waiting to put money back into the market, I've really been thinking things over. And I think that I'm going to have a pinpoint approach when it comes to my investments in the future. And I can't wait to share all that process, everything that 
I've been thinking about and uh, my financial journey continuing going forward on this channel. So thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you want more stock content, you know, comment down below. Let me know you want more content. If you uh, want more real estate content, I've got a lot more that I can do. I've really just been so stressed working through all this stuff. And on top of that, with my nine to five job, got a lot going on with that too. So if you guys, uh, you know, ever want specific content, leave me that comment down below. I would love to, uh, this channel is really built for an audience for you guys to start providing some of the stuff that you'd like to see. If you made it this far in this video, it would mean a lot to me. Go ahead, click that like button. And, uh, you know, I got a lot more things that are coming in the future. Again, at the end of this month, my schedule is going to be opened up quite a bit, uh, as these projects wrap up. So thank you so much for checking out this video guys and have a great day. Mm, 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 mm.